Now, thousands of telecoms workers are going on strike today in a dispute over pay. It's just the latest round of industrial action as unions from sectors across society push for deals that in some way reflect spirally inflation. Well, I'm joined now by the Labour MP Sam Tarry, who this week lost his job as Shadow Transport Minister after joining a picket line. Uh, Sam Tarry, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. So you were sacked by the Labour leader, uh, Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, he said for making up policy on the in uh, interviews that hadn't been agreed with the Labour leadership. So you must have been expecting to be sacked? No, I wasn't, to be totally honest with you. I, I didn't have an intention of giving TV interviews. I went there and was asked my opinion. And at the end of the day, I thought it was about time that we were really clear about whose side we're on. I'm on the side of ordinary British workers. I'm on the side of people going on strike, whether it's here today at BT Tower in central London, where BT have got not only their chief exec with 32% pay increases for himself, their actual lowest paid staff having to use food banks in the BT call centres. I think it's really clear, whether it be rail workers, whether it be communications workers, that the Labour Party is on their side. I didn't make up policy. All I said is that surely it should be right that we offer workers in this country to match inflation at least, because otherwise all they're getting offered is a real terms pay cut. And that's simply not good enough after 10 years of austerity and on top of that, spiralling inflation over the past few years. Well, Sir Keir Starmer would say that that is uh, making up policy on the hoof and he says that collective responsibility is absolutely vital in, in the running of the party. This isn't about me or Keir Starmer. This is about the Labour Party demonstrating it's on the side of ordinary British workers in this country. People are at snapping point. You know, when it's £100 to put car, petrol, fuel in your tank, when it's costing thousands of pounds to some people's medium-sized homes to even heat them or pay the energy bills, and when people's wages in real terms are shrinking every single day, we need to be crystal clear. We're on your side. We're on the side of ordinary British people. And, you know, none of these workers, whether they be BT postal workers, whether they be train drivers, whether they be low-paid ticket office staff from TSSA Union who went on strike the other day as well, they've made a really difficult decision to lose a day's pay. You know, the Labour Party is the party of trade unions. Trade unions are literally part of the Labour Party, you know? And so it's really clear, it's really clear to me that we need to say we're on your side, we're on the side of ordinary people that are suffering in this country, and that we've got a clear plan. We've got a plan to rebuild our economy. We've got a plan to invest in the technologies of the future. The ludicrousness of what the Tory leadership candidates are saying at the moment. You know, you've got Rishi Sunak, someone so out of touch, he doesn't even know how to fill up his car with petrol. And Liz Truss, a woman to committing that within the first 30 days of being in Downing Street, she'd wage war on trade unions, trying to dismantle 200 years of workplace freedoms. This is the future of Tory Britain. We desperately need a Labour government. You okay. know, some people said okay. it's not the job of a government in waiting to be on the picket lines. But I tell you this, if it had been a Labour government in power, we wouldn't need to be on picket lines because those disputes wouldn't be happening because there would have been decent pay offers on the table. And yeah, but what about that point? Resolved. I mean, government ministers don't stand on picket lines, do they? Government ministers don't know because they should be round the round the negotiating table. You know, where's Grant Shapps? He holds the purse strings to Network Rail. He holds the purse strings to the train operating companies, all 14 of them that are on strike. Where is he? Probably on holiday. Because I tell you what, he's doing absolutely nothing to resolve those disputes. Because actually, his former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, wanted those disputes to happen, to distract from the absolutely atrocious way he's running this country, to distract from his corruption, to distract from his dodgy links with former KGB officers. This is what the reality of what is going on is all about. And so Labour MPs from the Labour Party, the party of the trade union movement, standing on picket lines is clearly the right thing to do. It doesn't mean that every Labour MP needs to rush out onto every single picket line, but it's about making crystal well, clear we are on the side of ordinary British workers, not the establishment. OK, you say it's not about loads of, uh, of Labour MPs rushing out onto picket lines, but, but how many will, do you think? And do you think that more Labour MPs could be sacked for the same reason as you? I, uh, look, I mean, I hope that they're not, but I am absolutely certain that other shadow ministers, and I'm now a former shadow minister, will be on picket lines with the Communications Workers' Union. I guess we'll see how the day pans out. 
I think it's a fundamental mistake to ban Labour MPs from being on picket lines. It shouldn't happen, never happen. It's caused a complete car crash of a week and we should have been talking about what we're going to do to raise wages for the British people. You're down there with Dave Ward from the Communication Workers Union. I spoke to him a little bit earlier on and, and he said he's talking to other unions about coordinated action. What's your understanding of what that means? Are we talking about a general strike here? The TUC will have a major role in, I suppose, coordinating action across the country. Uh, I don't believe a general strike is uh, on the cards, but I do believe that trade unions need to work together to fight back against this government. They are the people showing true leadership at this moment. They are the people standing up for British workers. They represent over 7 million people in this country. And by the way, trade unions have been growing through the past few years, growing at a phenomenal rate. Some trade unions putting on tens, if not hundreds of thousands of members. This is a movement that's been rejuvenated. And it's been rejuvenated because people are turning to those that will stand up for them and protect them, not just defend their freedoms in the workplace, but bargain for better rights, for better pay, and to stop tax on terms and conditions. You know, we have a generation of young people now who are not only being told the best you can get is a zero hours contract, you'll never be able to afford to buy a house. And actually, you know, your rights at work are about to be destroyed by an incoming Tory Prime Minister. That's not good enough. People in Britain are not going to stand for that and people will push back and I believe that there are going to be many different ways that that happens including coordinated action across the trade union movement. Okay well Sam Tarry we appreciate your time uh, this morning thanks very much indeed.